И спортбетском уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И спортбетском живой азарт и холодный расчет. Спортбетском – уникальное место для настоящего геймера. Только здесь возможны ставки на киберспортивные события. Ты знаешь толк в самых популярных играх и готов рисковать? Смотри регулярные трансляции и зарабатывай реальные деньги. И Спортбетском – живой азарт и холодный расчет. All right, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally going to be on train and um, ready with the game. Oh, yes. yeah, it's it's supposed to be in the night round right now. I think there was some mix yeah. up between the two teams. I was getting right a little bit off. worried because I could see out <laughs> the corner of my eye, but of course, uh, you know, we have to play the ads. Otherwise, the sponsors, they get very sad and I can't really blame them. So, Yes, we didn't miss anything. That's the good news. And I hope you guys are ready for it. It's going to be ESG versus Virtus Pro in the SLTV Star Series Season 10 here. You're watching NIPTV. I'm Anders. With me is Vendetta and Semler as always. And I hope you guys are going to get ready for it. This is probably going to be a pretty intense match. And on train as well, the map that has recently been removed from EMS1 at Gamescom and uh, some other tournaments too. I mean, retracted by Valve, it seems. Oh. Yep. G3, I mean, it's put in the, it's been put in the reserve pool, hasn't it? So this is, this is cool for us. We get to actually watch a little bit of train before we, you know, hardly ever see it again. So Star Series is going to be your, your like one source for train action. You're not yeah. going to want to miss the match. Exactly. And yeah, I mean, Valve hopefully going to come up with a really cool rework, and it'll be a, a really popular map again as it was in, uh, in 1.6 at least. I don't know, Vendetta, in in Source, how much did people play train? A lot. It was. Uh... Definitely. I think it was a pretty even share of uh, what maps we saw in uh, in CSS. Mainly because okay. it's more or less the same maps as in as in uh, 1.6, barring Inferno and some mm -hmm. some tiny changes. But yeah, all the maps were completely viable. Okay, cool. Well, look, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be ESG, the former SK lineup, starting onto uh, the CT side, which is definitely the more favored side on this map. And then it's going to be Virtus Pro on the less favored side. But it doesn't matter as much as it used to. You can still do just fine on the Terry side, especially if you win a pistol round. And speaking of pistol rounds, look at this one from Virtus Pro with two Molotovs and a bunch of smoke grenades. This is. I'm curious to see where Snacks and Neo are going to throw these. Yeah, what's I'm the play guessing here? If they go for the B bomb site, they're going to try and prevent someone like Mike Lele, who's right here, from actually doing anything. Like the rotation through connector. If there's fire there, it's going to be pretty tough. That is true. I, I wouldn't be. I mean, they could, they could try a pretty cute move with actually denying diffuses as oh. well, because a Molotov lasts for X amount of time. If so they, that would be so sexy if they did that. That would really make me happy if they if they did something like that. They're still keeping them, so there is hope that we're gonna see some some real wizardry here. Viali jumping down. Snacks is uh, actually Neo's the only one with the Molotov still on the high ground, yeah. so I'd expect them to do it from that angle. Bomb goes down. Snacks pushing up. It's looking pretty good right now for Virtus Pro. The up hand does manage to find Pasha in the end, so that is a man advantage now for ESG. The Swedes moving in with the retake on this B site, but the bomb has been down for quite some time. They're starting to run low here. ESG have to make the move. There's another kill for Hoi Den, but by, by Ali with a great position by Bomb Train manages to get two. Yeah, now it's a three on three. Neo still has that Molotov. I am very curious now. He's bringing it out. He's going to throw it down. They can't defuse Vendetta. You may have been right here. It's going to be down to a two on two and now a one on two. But there's no time and they had no chance to defuse. Absolute brilliance. Got to give some credit for, to Virtus Pro for that one. Yeah, and it's something that a lot of 
top players have actually been thinking about for quite some time. But it's really hard to actually pull off because normally you want to be able to shoot people and it's kind of a risky move just to let that Molotov basically hold them off the bomb for that long. But they, they, they absolutely know that a Molotov, they can't sit through an entire mall or the diffuse time uh, I mean, in a Molotov and survive. Do it, right? Yeah, they're, they're going to die either way. So, I mean, it is pretty sick to be using it that way. Yeah. I mean, we just saw it work perfectly from there. Neo had the yeah. upper ground advantage to boot, so it was a really tough situation for ESG. Not only is there the Molly, but then they have to try and kill him too. Yeah. He like, kind of just like peaked it and got nailed, but still. Yeah. Oh, nice return from Emilio taking down Neo, and he's still hiding inside the bomb site with his USPS. Does take a grenade, and well, they pretty much know where he is. He's charging up, not going to work out, and they so far only have the one kill. My killer left, and well, that's a long range shot with a P250. So, overall, a pretty respectable round from ESG. Getting those two kills in is nice for them, means they they put some, uh, some limit on Virtus Pro here, and it's going to be straight into the third round where. Uh, they could go for like crazy for Mars's, but they're gonna stick with pistols and even a deagle on Emilio. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to to go for anything crazy here. I think the the goal is to get those ops as quickly as possible for ESG. Get Delpan equipped. Maybe Michael. I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. I wouldn't be surprised to see if they play with two ops the on this map. Op. They could spread themselves out pretty, pretty widely and still get away with it. I do Depending on this obviously where Look at what Rogue is doing. Yeah, that's an, this is a nice move, playing bad aggressively, because, again, it's it's an eco. It doesn't matter that much if you get picked off, but he's getting a ton of information just by doing this. Yeah, it does allow them to put four people in the A bomb site, which they are right now, and Delpan could have very nearly got a kill. Pasha solo on health, and now Hutton going to come in as well. Pasha should be going down, but that, they're just not finding him. There it is, finally. And now Rogue going to show up, but it will be a little bit too late. And this Mag-10 is gonna, he's gonna try, but it's not gonna be enough. That I think, actually, they could have got a lot more out of this round ESG, but as you said, it's just an eco, they tried something and it didn't quite work. So there's the one AWP being purchased on the CT side, and we're looking at Mike Lele for potentially, yep, yeah, the auto sniper instead. So there it is. You're almost right. There it is. That's, that's really interesting. Now, Mike Lele, position-wise, I mean, does he take it into inner? But no, he's actually going to come out here. Four guys early on the A site right now. Four. Very I mean, this is a very cool position that Michael Lele is holding as well, right here from Connector looking towards Team Main. If they rush through here, Virtus Pro, ankles are going to get shot. Yeah, yeah. and he can rotate back quickly, pretty quickly towards the B bomb site, where it seems like early in the round, it's Rogue holding B completely alone, which is very common for te for uh, for train. Not un unusual to have four people in A and one person B early on, because obviously you can get to A a lot quicker. So if it is going to be a rush for a bomb site, it's probably going to be an A rush, and then you have almost all your people there. So it's pretty much just how the map works out. But now, after a little bit of waiting time, Virtus Pro decided it's time to go for the B bomb side. Rogue holding down inside the spot, and he's going to get taken down with a great headshot from Neo. And that's a lot of trouble now coming ESG's way. Nice reaction time there by Mike Adele, though he gets one, but not fast enough because the second did land a shot on Pasha, but Pasha will land the headshot back. And now it's a man advantage for VP there on the site. They will have the plant. And ESG, there just there just isn't any hope for them in this sort of situation. If they can back off and hold on to their guns, that would be great. Yeah, that's about as great as it could get, given how they're losing the round. But I think they set themselves up in a bit of an uh, awkward position there. When VP smokes off higher, there shouldn't be any possibility for Rook to get picked off, really, from higher. Like, he has to know where... Michael Ella or XM can potentially cover him from, and uh, he didn't do that. And that's how Virtus Pro got pretty much into the uh, bomb site without any worries at all. Yeah, and it was actually watching towards the the bottom of the of the uh, stairs there, or the stairs, the ladder, right, coming off the upper. Yeah. I think he was expecting them to just come jumping to down. Drop down now, yeah. and there you go. But VP but, a step ahead. Yeah, and uh, the weird thing is that he would have had control if they dropped down, but. Didn't seem like Rug was actually watching for the lower either, because after Michael Ella had to well uh, change his position after the first guy dies from uh, ESG, mm -hmm. there was already a Virtus Pro member who had pushed up from lower all the way towards CT Link. Luckily for them, Michael Ella managed to pick him off, but still, like, I'm not really sure what the guy who initially held Inner was actually holding at that point before he got picked off by Neo. No, I'm not sure either. This is obviously a great start by Ellie with some good kills. Delpan goes down, and the one M4 that they've saved on Hutton is going to be stuck still in the CT spawn, and uh, it 
as you know, as starts goes, this is a pretty nice one for Virtus Pro. They're on the less favored side. They pick up five rounds straight early on. It's going to be up to the next round before ESG can buy again. And I mean, I don't know. I I kind of like you know that one round they had when Rogue was pushed up aggressively. I wish they would do more stuff like that. I'm generally a pretty big fan of CT aggression on on a map like Train. Yeah, it's a bit of a risky call though. I'm not really sure if you want to do it the first round you buy up, no, simply because. Not. A team could play very differently from the pistol. You're not gonna manage to feel out all of their uh, tendencies from the pistol round and the anti ecos. You can't really know what they're doing by the first spy round. So I think that's why they opt to go for the the safer choice and just holding back. And I think they could have been perfectly fine and they should have been able to hold that inner bomb site with some small adjustments. So I don't think there's any real reason for them to try to go aggressively just yet. But if they continue to struggle, then obviously, you know, throw some smokes and advantageous positions and push up and get a better position. Let's see. Interestingly, it's Neo on top here, 7, 1, and 4. Nice to see him playing so well. Delpan gets smoked off immediately, and the push is on for the A bomb site. Good thing going to get a kill, and Delpan gets one down on Ivy. So now, finally, some good defending coming out here from ESG. Not over yet, but it's a 4 on 3. Oh, Neo, I mean, leads the charge, gets one, and then, unfortunately for him, looks towards two CT members. There's Pasha with a headshot on Emilio, though. That's going to open things up. Brings it back to a two-on-two -two until Michael Lilly manages to get a good spray on the Taz, but no kill for him. We'll get it in the end, and Delpan will get the final one. That's ESG, the Swedes, finally on the board here on their CT side. Yeah, and that's about time as well. Now we just need... I mean, we do need Rogue to pick up a kill at least. He's zero, zero, and six. One more death, and he's gonna he's gonna do the James Bond. Uh, and if he gets one kill and one death, he's gonna do the Brazil. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's too well, soon. Like we're, too soon. <laughs> we're not letting that slip anytime soon. For too soon. From Brazil, like that's gonna that's gonna be a thing. Yeah, it definitely will be. Ouch. Oh, it's gonna be some Brazilian fans out there angry right now. <laughs> I can't really fault the Brazilian fans, I guess. It's their team that just was a complete mess. Yeah, it's so unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Let's let's not think about that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bit of a beating. Now, already some damage done to Snacks here. There is actually not a lot of smokes left for ESG. They have a one Molotov here. That means, uh, yeah, Virtus Pro should be able to walk basically into a, to a bomb site without uh, meeting much you know, resistance like that. They are pushing up towards Ivy, and then they have some people down on Pop Dog, so I'm not sure what they're doing here. It seems like they want to go for a split. Yeah. Alley it's not pop. split it simply, but this is going to be risky because Delpan is on point. Yeah, I can I can agree with the split, but I think I would normally have one guy in the middle at least, just just to be to there. Create, yeah, just to create attention, really, yeah. and draw people away from it, because now they're running into a bit of a, 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 bit of a trap, really. ESG are thinking oh, 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 that this oh, oh. is going to be a B play right now. They've rotated three guys over, one into connector and two on the site. And now they're out of position. Virtus Pro, thanks to Wade Dead, they're falling apart somewhat here. They do manage to get a kill back their way. ESG now with the man advantage. They're rotating through CT. But the bomb is going to get planted now for VP. And if they get a good after plant with the planter, this could be a pretty decent situation for them. Yeah, Taz got to be really careful. Mike Kilili almost caught off guard there. Taz missing some shots. And now they're going to try and double team him. Rogue finally gets a kill. That's about time. Snacks, look at this. He's hiding right behind Emilio. Snacks, he actually might just be a genius. He's waiting. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, Rogue finds him, but did you see how much work Snacks put into that one on three? That was ice cold. That was absolutely ice cold, and the, that's the type of situation where he pulls it off. He's a genius, and he kind of looks like a putz when he doesn't make it, but you have to give him credit for trying because that's pretty much the only way he's going to win that round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that so, could have been beautiful, couldn't it? He could have. He could have hit as Emilio was basically just bumping up against him. If he had hit and just got the kill on the one guy defusing, they would have pretty run out of time. He yeah. didn't need to kill all three, he just had to kill one person. Exactly. That was so. a close call, dude. It was a real close call there. But that's that's the kind of play that we've been seeing from Snacks in the match earlier as well. So Snacks definitely showing he's in good shape tonight. Wasn't it something similar did uh, during the EMS either finals or semifinals on Mirage? Yeah. I think that was Snacks as well. Was that Snacks who snuck up into B apartments? Yeah, like got up behind, apart from uh, underpass, I actually and watched three people. Yeah. Yeah. So it definitely has a thing for doing this. And it seems like Virtus Pro are again kind of attack the, the outer bomb site. This time they are putting people towards mid and they're actually throwing a bit of a nade. Uh, or quite a few nades actually. Yeah. It's 
little bit of uh, a push coming out here. Snags the first one jumping in. He's going to get taken down by Delpan, who's up on the high ground. And Delpan actually gets a leg shot on another guy. That, I think that was Bailey. Bailey, sorry, down to 17. Now, a bit of a return from Neo. Finally, it's still a four on three at the moment, and there is no bomb plan yet. And the whole of the CT squad are rotating in towards this bomb site, so things are not looking good here for the Polish team. And if they don't get this round, I think they're going to be down to ecoing, so that will be a big step up for the uh, Swedish team. But by Ali, great headshots on 17 HP. Finally, they get one kill, and then a team kill coming in. Taz takes down by Ali, and he's going to go down to Mikey Lele. So, a little bit of a screw up at the end from Taz there. Yeah, was that, that? Was, unfor was unfortunate. I think both tried to go for, I think it was, was it Michael Lello who had the op? I or maybe no, it was Michael Emilio uh, who was, had the op. Did Taz the get line. the kill through him? Like, that's what I'm wondering. Because I thought Taz did get that kill. He just happened, you know, Biley just happened to get in the way. Did he? I think so. I might have been. But yeah, a bit of unfortunate happenings from and Snacks is chilling and he's fine. Okay, he's back. Uh, yeah, I think, look at all the smokes. I'm think, I think they want to go for a plant, especially when you see yeah. the, the bombers over here. So they're yeah. going to try and throw a ton of smokes into the A bomb site and then try and plant right by this barrel, I'd assume. So let's see how that's going to work out. This is Taz. He's got the he's got the ball. He just wants to make it to the end zone and get that touchdown. That's all they need. And there he is. You can't shoot through this barrel, so he's pretty safe. Nice execution from Virtus Pro. Very simple, very common, but it's nice to see it work. <laughs> Look at Chipman. <laughs> just sneaking Sneaky. up behind. Uh, good positioning. Yeah, so the goal is not to win that round with the bomb plan. Obviously, if it happens that you do, then, you know, great. But getting a bomb plant means you have so much more money to work with. And just look at them, all of them above 6,000 here in the 10th round. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's like you said, no, no other real goal than just getting the bomb down there. And it's not a big investment. You, uh, I think it was four smokes. Yeah. So 1,200 or, you know, my bad math is hard. But yeah, 1,200. Yeah, you're uh, right. Dollars for uh, a plan that's definitely going to garner you a lot more team wide. So, a good pickup. Or yeah, a I mean, you assistant. spend 300 on smoke, but you get 500 if you get the bomb down. So, you know, each player is still $500 up. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a smoke and a flash for the upcoming round. Now, it, they are charging out into the bomb site this round. And look at how quickly they're going to put the bomb down. Virtus Pro uncontested. Finally, Delpan comes in with a kill. They need a lot more here. ESG actually have a big problem on their hands because there's so much time already off this bomb and Emilio is on a big flanking mission but it might be too late by the time he gets here. Yeah, right now, I mean, look at this flank coming in from Hoi Ten. He goes for the mass spray. He gets one and it's going to be Roke and Hoi Ten double teaming. Now it's all down to Taz in a 1v3 sitting in Bob Dog. Not the best position, but he does spot a man in teammate. No kill for him though. Okay, so I'm, I, even when this was 5 on 3, I was still getting worried for ESG because they took such a long time. I mean, imagine if Taz walks out of Pop Dog then and gets the kill on the guy defusing. That's that's the round over. Like they can't really leave it that open. I mean, it's it's two cool. Kills from Delpa. Yeah, they make obviously a big difference, but I think they're playing a little bit too passively here, SG, in the A bomb site. Yeah, I think they they're more about trying to safe it in because Virtus Pro have already picked up five rounds, so they don't want to risk it by having one guy going superhero mode and. Yeah. Trying to, to win the round by himself. BP and also chasing up the pace, though. So. Yeah. So he went very aggressively there. Yeah, and that might have caught him off time. Yeah, I think that was what really happened is that Virtus Pro, you know, they were just chucking smokes and nades as they went, and they were out on the site before ESG were able to get into any position, any forward position to put a stop to it. Yeah. And I, oh, so, I like this setup from ESG, though. This is an aggressive take on, on the, out in the yard area, and this is really cool to see. This is something they haven't done previously, and this is obviously something they want to do to prevent Virtus Pro for or getting into a position like we saw last round when where it's you know a matter of seconds if they can get the bomb defused or not. Question is do they go full JW or not? <laughs> oh that's a pretty good grenade from Mikey Lily did heavy damage to two people now they're pushing in broke inside the bomb side and he hasn't had a lot of success defending this position earlier. Let's see if this is the time he spots one guy up and he's gonna go down. Mikey Lily with the instant return. No bomb plan yet this time it's very late in the round but look at where Snacks is holding right on the other side of the smoke. He's just using this as like a virtual wall and hoping that someone is gonna try and push out. Bayali picks up one more kill. Delpan doesn't realize that Snacks is there. Takes uh, Gets taken down and it's another headshot and Snacks playing way too well for ESG right now. Uh, Mike and I are now a load, and he's starting to get into a position where he's going to be able to pick off Snacks. That's a good start there, but he can't get the follow-up. Neo on top of the train will get the final kill. VP, they finally put a halt to ESG's run. Six rounds now on the board for VP. Mm. This 
is starting to get very scary now for the Swedes. And they don't have too much money either. Actually, and no, never mind, they do. The worrying thing for me is the fact that Virtus Pro did the exact same thing they did in the first buy round. Yes. On the intertake, and ESG had, did not adapt at all. They died oh, by the same thing. But look what they're doing here. They're rushing down on Ivy. Flashes out. Actually, Virtus Pro is just standing still waiting. Delpan gets a kill as well on Neo, but this is the kind of CT side aggression I really enjoy, so I'm happy they did it. It didn't work out just as well as I think they had hoped, but... Uh, they still come out a man ahead. Yeah. And get information to boot. Like, they would have seen the bomb, they would have at least known that they got one kill there. I think ESG, after that kind of push, walking away from it, one of them, they're gonna be pretty, uh, pretty pleased. Yeah, I, I don't think that's a bad trade for ESG at all. No, but obviously, I mean, obviously they didn't expect Pasha to be to be ready for that push, though. And that's kind of I think that's what you're alluding to, uh, Anders. You know, I mm -hmm. just meant that if Delpan hadn't got the kill over at B, they would have just traded one for one. Oh, yeah. I think they were they were hoping to basically just kill some guy and run Get back. Get a free kill and yeah, run back. Exactly. Yeah, Sure, sure. But look at this though, my Kaleli with a good rotation timing here, going into the B bomb site. Delpan calling out for help, and he is alone right now. AWP to take down Snacks. The bomb is down. He's going to call that out immediately. And now Mike Kaleli right through the smoke. Very clever play. Taz is alone, one on four, and he's going to go down. So Mike Kaleli stepping it up here. He's also top fragging on the team, and actually in the game, together with Delpan. 13 kills each, and it's going to be back to 6-6. Six, six. They're really splitting the work uh, right now between the two of them, Delpan and uh, Mike Kaleli. Very good play so far. I mean, that round that round really did seem to come down to good communication, and Delpan landing a good shot to slow up Virtus Pro with that lower take as well. Yeah, I think that was the bigger bigger factor more than anything else. The fact that Delpan had the attention of all three Virtus Pro members as they came down onto the towards the side, even the guy on higher, because you constantly had to focus on where Delpan might show up. Oh, what's happening? There it is. A little bit of a weird dance going on. Actually, what is going on? Somehow, Virtus Pro get the bomb plant and have control of the bomb site. They don't have uh, any body armor or anything else, but this is not going to be that easy, I think, for ESG to bring it back. Now it's a one on two, and they let go of an eco round that they or an anti eco that they should not have done. That was a huge misplay from ESG, especially because the first play out of this bomb site from ESG actually peaks up from the from the ladder by the train and he sees a bunch of people coming in middle. He must have spotted at least three members, and he threw out a Molotov as well. So they should have been able to make a lot of calls based on this information, and they just didn't. Yeah. But that, that, that's one of the rounds that you were talking about earlier. The only goal for Virtus Pro that round is to get the bomb down, and yeah. they do that, and somehow they end up winning the round by some really good shooting from Bialy. And Snacks as well. This is this is really shaping up to be VP with the master play. Bialy now gets another kill, brings it back to a four on four. A lot of damage taken by VP though, so that's not going to help their situation too much. Oh. And they catch Emilio, who was going for the flank. And in the meantime, Snacks has actually cleared the whole of the A bomb side, and it's going to take down Quinton. In spite of the fact that Snacks had 18 HP at the beginning of this round, because he's got shot through smoke, he still clears the whole of the A bomb side, and basically just secures it for his team. Good shot for Mikey Lily. Great second shot. And that brings it back into a two-on-two. This might not be over yet. This is a very important round for ESG. They got to win it. And it's Mike Hillele with a triple and then the quad. What an amazing round from the Swedish player. And that's going to secure the tie now. 7-7. Seven, seven. That was that was truly something. Wow. Uh, yeah, just a magnificent round coming up from uh, Michael Ella. And uh, they kind of get that round. They just gave it way back, more or less. Because they shouldn't have won that round. That should have been Virtus Pro's round. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Agree. But yeah, great play from Mike Lola. And uh, as you guys mentioned, it's kind of him and Delpen holding them in this game. Yeah, I'd have to agree. But yeah, there's no predicting rounds like that. That was just. I mean, walking into A site as well and landing all the shots you did, that was yeah. just flawless. Can they right, get the well, last round though? That's the thing. If this finishes 8-7, I think ESG still have a, a, a real chance of winning this game. But if they if it's the other way and then Virtus Pro win the second half pistol round, things are gonna start to go downhill really quickly. Mike Kilele though is in a great spot to take care of Upper, and actually Upper has been a really big problem here at the B bomb side. Rogue hasn't been able to hold it down alone. So I think this is a good adjustment for the CT side. Mike Kilele, he's gonna let the first man through. Gets the second kill. Nicely done there. He knows there's a man and he gets him! Both players cleared out of upper this time around. Michael Lillard making the adjustments necessary to put a stop to that. But that doesn't stop the bomb from getting planted. Now that's seven kills for Michael Lillard in the past two rounds with the AWP. Can he get some more here? No, he's finally put down. 
Yeah, Snatch saying it's about time you stop that. And actually, it's just going to spiral out of control in spite of that impressive triple kill early on. Emilio is alone, and he's going to miss the shot with a deagle. And that brings it back. Snatch with his triple kill, or well, triple kill of his own. And Virtus Pro make it 8 7. So. I mean, Del Vendetta, how did that happen? They start off with a great triple kill. Okay, the bomb went down, but that was uh, that was a four on two, wasn't it? Yeah, it's it's a weird situation where they actually get the kills they need, but they still lose too much map control. They had basically no real... Uh, they didn't really have any control over the inner bomb site. And again, that's the fourth, fourth time Virtus Pro do that same inner push, and it's the fourth time Rock gets caught in the same position. And it's always Bialy who messes him up. N Bialy didn't. I don't think Bialy got the kill this round, but as she still drew all the attention from Roke to higher, even though Michael was already aiming there. And it's there's something just feels wrong about the way they they're playing the inner site because there's just a free reign down lower into yeah. the B bomb site, and uh, that's kind of what burnt them there because SK or I'm sorry ESG had no real idea of what was going on, where Pasha was playing and where Snacks was uh, in the after plant, and that burned them. Some strange, strange rounds coming out, and I think this could have been a very different first half for ESG if they had just uh, pulled themselves a little bit together. But now it's too late for that. We're on the second half, and yeah, Swedish team starting off with some smokes. They're definitely going to go for an A-type execute here. Smoking down towards Ivy, which means that Pasha is not going to be able to defend too well. But then, can they can they pull it out from here? That's the big question. Look at how far away Wordus Pro is from this A-bomb side. I think they're basically playing this A-bomb side as a retake. Seems well, like they are, yeah. yeah. The bomb is out on the site now. Taz will find Rogue, mm -hmm. and there's Leo with the flank on way 10. That's two down in the blink of an eye. VP now with a two-man advantage moving in on this side. The bomb is yet to be planted. No bomb plan right. Delpan bringing it back a little bit. Mike Kalele rushing up. He's got to take down Taz and he's got to do it quickly. Misses the shot. It's still a two-on-one, but that flick from Neo initially was so impressive. Really glad we caught that. Now Delpan looking for one more kill. Almost takes down Snags and he's got the double. Mike Kalele with another one and now Snags is alone. He might be just the player to do this, though. He's got the USPS. All he needs is one click in the face, and that is pretty much going to be it. 40 seconds left. They're still trying to do it, and it will be Mike Kilele to pick up the triple kill, and ESG bring it back at the on the very brink. I mean, that's ridiculously close, and as you guys were pointing out earlier, it's just Mike Kilele and Delpan. They basically are the ESG team right now. I think for three rounds, it's just Mike Kilele. That's 10 frags in three rounds right now. He's, uh, he's definitely waking up here. And that's that's the that's him saving his team essentially, getting them the second round pistol like or the second pistol. That's so important. That keeps ESG in this game. Yeah, it definitely does. And uh, now, barring any silly plays from ESG, they should have two more rounds. This yeah, so is this is big. So something to consider, because obviously in a, in a normal, if this had been 1.6 train. And and Virtus Pro had got eight rounds on the terrorist side. We would probably be calling it already. We'd just be, yeah. you know, saying that's it. You can't really do anything. Um, it, it, in 1.6, train was basically like nuke sometimes plays now, where you, all you need is about four or five rounds on the terrorist side, and you're you're good to go. But in global offensive, the map has changed quite a bit. So I'm I wouldn't say that it's completely over here. Oh, no. Good positioning there from Snacks, though. He does manage to use the Zeus spot, and it's a good effect. But that's two. It's just back and forth right now between these two teams. The fight at range for Emilio. He comes out on top. Pasha still here with the CZ75 coming in through connector though. Three members fairly low for ESG. This is possible for Pasha. He just needs to find the shot. I think I think it's right now for Pasha. It's not the goal isn't to win the round. It's basically just to bring as many ESG members into death with him. Because he could easily pick up all three, but I don't think he can pick up all three and defuse the bomb. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's like Huiten staying far away. That's the thing. ESG didn't give it to him free. Like they're like, okay, well, fine. Stay on the other side of the bomb site. We've got two guys there low. We're just gonna put them up in the hallways now that we know where you are. Yeah. Oh, Pasha, Ooh. so close. And now waiting to knife anyone might come after him. Really aggressive move there. But he does save the CZ-75 and the body armor, so he has one more chance to do something here. But ESG make it out with three members alive, which is pretty good for their economy here. Not too shabby at all, and uh, Delpan picking up the AWP already. Uh, normally, I'm, I'm not a big fan of a pickup like this in the second round, or I mean third round. Simply because if you die and you're not able to, to get that AWP back, that's uh, an incredibly... like It's such a huge money loss. 
Even though you might win the round and all that, it's still gonna hurt you pretty badly. Uh, Rogue making sure Pasha couldn't sneak up from behind, so things are looking pretty good. But you are right, of course. Don't want to be throwing away any AWPs this early in the second half. That would be a huge blow to ESG. But this round seems pretty good, and you know if they can take a flawless round like this without losing anyone, it's gonna definitely help them in case Rodas Pro, uh, you know, off to a really good start once they can buy rifles, which is gonna be in the next round. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I mean, this 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 is definitely looking like a pretty decent position here. The ESG, they're getting in there. They're they're communicating well together as well. It seems mm -hmm. like they're really just working together to get those frags and. Roke watching their backs like that, that's that's solid. That makes you feel a bit more confident for ESG as well, making sure that they're they're not giving Virtus Pro any way to get freebies here. They're definitely playing a very tight game. And if Michael Ailey continues to just rain or land the shots the way he has been in the past few rounds, this is this is gonna be a tough fight for Virtus Pro now. Yes, it will. We'll have to see how it's going to unfold. I'm curious. They actually don't have that much money on Virtus Pro side, so there's going to be no AWP picked up. I don't know, Vendetta. I'm I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't try and save uh, you know the money to to buy one of those on Pasha. Like yeah, I'm uh, since they ha don't have the money to actually kit Pasha with an op, I'm hoping to see, uh, I guess an alternative setup. But it seems like yes, you're just taking it right to them, Michael. Like, uh, Running out into yards if you can get that early pick. But yeah, I, I would like to see Virtus Pro playing this aggressively right now since they don't have an op and kind of take ESG off guard. They've got four guys holding on A site proper, at least. One man watching towards Ailey, and that's going to not work out for him as yeah. Delpan will take out Pasha. And this is a big deal here for Virtus Pro. Ali is so important on the CT side. You absolutely have to keep control of it. As soon as it goes into the T hands, then you're, then you're worried about the crossfire potential terrorists coming in from all sorts of angles and that just can't be allowed no not exactly a good start here neo i think he spotted a couple of people down on ivy again so he's gonna t wait a little bit longer 50 seconds still on the clock and esd are shaping up for a you know for 212 push to the a bomb side they got two people down towards pop dog mike Lily in the middle and then the last two people over here on ivy that's rogue and it's critten coming in so we'll see now they're running out of time they got to make this execute happen and it has to be Right about now, Neo raiding on the corner. He's going to spot the first guy coming in, gets the shot, but then he goes down. And that's a big problem. Next shot by Ali goes down, and then Taz to follow. This is just falling apart for the Polish team. Oh, oh great wow. play, Michael Lele. Two kills for him this round, and then pretty health healthily spread. Roke, he threw himself on the on that nade originally. He gave himself up to Neo, so Huiten could get the kill. Uh, uh, that, or was, whatever. that was just... The result of a really well executed push from ESG because the second Bayali has to rotate from holding behind six train or uh, T main if you will, if you'd like yeah because Neo goes down in alley that's the very second that they push out from uh, alley so Michael Ale or from T main so Michael Ale gets the easy frag on him and everything just kind of snowballs from there and that's what happens when you execute properly. Because you create rotations and you take advantage of the rotations, like the weakness for yeah. every CT player while they're rotating. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Delvan <laughs> cut that guy when he was jumping. That looked funny. Yeah. You're right, though. And actually, that gives me a great opportunity to, to you know, show some of my drawing skills. So I'll try and do that once this round is over real quick. Because you are right. That's a very, it's a very sort of unique setup here on train at the A-bomb side that, that sort of... It produces the kind of effect that you were just talking about when you have exactly the right timing. So here we go. Let's say you've got a bunch of people in the middle of the map, and you know some guys holding towards uh, Pop Dog, one guy's holding towards T Main, one guy's holding towards Ivy. If one of these guys dies, then someone else has to basically, at least some of the time, take up his position. So if you execute exactly at the right time as a terrorist, you could end up having basically the, the CTs always look the wrong way because they're just spotting where someone got killed. And then, you know, as they turn to do that, there's an execution, you know, at the next entrance and then the next entrance. So you're just basically all the time looking in the wrong direction. That can that can work really well, but it's not easy. Uh, it's extremely hard, and that's what kind of recognizes a good train team. Uh, in Source, uh, Very Games, or now Titan, was just a nightmare to play on a map like that. Same thing with Fetish's team, because whenever you looked where you're... <laughs> As soon as you did something that didn't involve just sitting completely still, you you would die from from the spot you were just aiming at. It's completely ridiculous to to actually play versus, and it's incredibly infuriating as well because it feels like you're you can't really do anything at all. <laughs> 
Nice. Oh, Emilio gets the second kill as well. He's down to 9 HP. Finally, he's going to go down to Taz, but that's still a very big opening from just one player here on the terrorist side. Snacks and Neo left, and they got to come back into this. They need to stand their ground. Otherwise, they're going to run out of rounds and out of money as well. Snacks gets a kill on Michaelele. Bomb goes down, but they can win this back. He's going to try and flash down, then peaks Delpan playing a dangerous game here. Grenade's going to rain in, and Delpan takes the kill easily. Neo looking for the headshot, and Rogue does not have to challenge this. He can just wait all day. Yeah, this is an easy round for ESG right now. But that was well. that was Emilio with the... the that kind yeah. of opening yeah. was ridiculous. That was all Emilio. That was so big from him because he, he drops down to 9 HP after the first kill, after he gets the first one, and then for him to challenge and pick off Pasha as well. Two kills like that at that position just opened up the entire map for ESG. So uh, now, eight. well, yeah, this is the thing, right, guys? Oh my God. Virtus Pro, Virtus Pro, they're struggling. Yeah, and they're broke. I mean, they they have they have to win this round. If they lose this round, then we're probably going to look at fifteen to eight for ESG and a match point. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have two hundred dollars combined. So you are absolutely right. They really are running completely out of funds here to uh, to finance their defense. And even this round is not too impressive, right? And again, no AWP. And when you're up against Delpan and he's seeing the shots that he's hitting right now, what are you, how are you going to stop him? It doesn't really seem like the AWP has come to the fore. Like, we haven't seen any big AWP play all game long from VP. No, so. it's it's been all SK with the... or ESG with the snipers. Yeah, definitely. Great leg shot from Delpan looking under the train in that very narrow gap and... Obviously, you can't look under the trains as much as you used to, but you can just do it with the sniper rifle, and that's by Ali now, down to 16, or Kriton also down to 16, so I guess that's fairly even. Now they're moving towards the B side of the map, which is something that ESG haven't done too much here in the second half, and we'll see if it's going to work out. Snacks and Neo are ready, so they actually have a really good idea of what's going on right now, VP. Oh, they've got the bomb. They've got the. I mean, they've got the nades. They're already putting the smokes down. Flashes as well. They're gonna get ready for this. And snacks in a great position to shut down Michael Lele on upper. That's a big blow dealt to ESG here. Losing Michael Lele early for the take isn't gonna help. No. And now I kind of want the rest immediately on Delpan to just stay back because I know why they want to push in and throw away these rifles. Uh, well, I, they, yeah, they've got. Fifteen k. Like, they got a lot of money already, so I guess they're just hoping for some sort of magic to happen. But that's. The complete opposite of the the outer push we saw a couple of rounds ago. That that was not well executed. No. Uh, XM goes down through smoke, which is I'm not really sure if Tanax saw him or if he just had a hunch or heard something. But he's just in waiting. Any case, yeah. In any case, Mike Lella goes down through the smoke, and I mean, it's kind of the most hesitant inner push I've seen in a while because Rock ends up running down alone. Then Emilio follows alone. It's just really not well functioning that yeah, now now it's on though by ali coming in with a good kill pasha with a grenade on emilio so now maybe it's the time for the polish team to turn this uh esg show around and actually be able to win it they are on the more favored side and right now they have a one-man advantage but by ali is very low and if he gets spotted by rogue here it might be all over there's the kill Kriton takes one down now it's a two on two snacks with the return and rogue looking the wrong way at the wrong time he could have been dead right there but he's he gets another chance to maybe turn this one on two around is he going the right way or not? Bialy turns oh. a, turns to the corner just in the nick of time to keep him alive. Now Roke, I mean, he's kind of out in the middle of nowhere and he's caught in a flank. Uh, Whichever way he goes, it's going to be the back step. It's a bit of a cat and mouse situation right there. I'm quite sure Roke could have got that kill on Bialy. I yeah. think he, I think he was Probably a little should. bit too nervous then. Probably should have gotten it, and I don't think he he didn't actively try to shoot through the lower part of the train. Even though he potentially could have done that, seeing how low uh, Bayali was, but you know, it's something like he didn't feel confident in doing that. And uh, that was a bit of a mistake because that would have made it into 1v1. And the guy by Pop Giant had already made a ton of sounds, so he definitely knew that there was someone around there. That's a good point. Delpan trying for the aggressive play. He's looking for one more, but actually, they do spot him, and he's just going to fall back and play it safely. And uh, Virtus Pro setting up outside in this A bomb side. They are going to rotate one guy into B, which is really standard. We sell the same thing for ESG, so nothing surprising there. Emilio goes down, and that's by Ali spotting the feet there. So, not the best start here. ESG, whatever had them going on in the beginning of this second half here, they won how many rounds? Six rounds in a row at the beginning of the second half, but now they seem to have cooled down, which is not that great because they're also running out of money. Yeah, they're. I mean, I think they're, they'll be able to buy out one more time 
yeah. uh, if they lose this round, but this is definitely not a situation where we want to get into because we know that VP can play seat to side on train. There's no doubt about it. We're seeing it right here. Bayali and Snacks doing all the work. Triple kill from Bayali and Delpan again in a position where I would just want him to try and save this. I have no idea why he would want to go for it with that little time left and especially because it's an AWP. Uh, they are running out of money, but as you said, they can buy once again. But 13-11, it's getting scary because even though they have a two-round lead, once they start ecoing, it's going to go really fast. Like Rodas Pro, they're going to equalize and then they're going to take the round lead and then maybe even the whole game. That's definitely a possibility. The big thing here is that Delpan doesn't have the money to buy that AWP now. And as we said earlier, like it really does seem like it's been ESG that's been doing the work with the sniper rifles. So far, Snacks takes out Michael Lele again. And that's not going to help things here for the Swedes. Michael Lele, he needs to he needs to be in this game. He needs to be in these rounds to be making a difference. Uh, ESG have definitely been relying on him top ragging for them. Yeah, a lot of the punching power goes away for ESG as soon as either Michael Lele or Delpan goes down. It kind of puts a hold to their uh, the entire flow of the team. It doesn't really seem like they're they're left with a plan a lot of the times. So that's a great Whoa. shot from both Delpan and Quitten. So. Yeah. Oh, and one more for Delpan. You've got to be kidding me. That's you're right. Those are some mind blowing headshots, and he gets <laughs> one more, clicking and strafing at the same time. That's a very unusual style. And now Snacks is alone. So you, I mean, you said it just in time. A big performance from either Delpan or Michaelele. That's what they need, and there it is. Triple kill, 14 and 11. And Virtus Pro, now they truly have their backs against the wall. If they lose this round, they lose the game. They will have nothing left for, left for the remaining round, basically. They'll be, uh, they'll be straight pistol armor buying on the six, on the 15th, 16th round. That is not going to be allowed here. Virtus Pro definitely getting out onto this A site. They actually have nobody on the B site at all. They fully stack up the A site, expecting ESG to go full aggressive aggressive here uh -oh, instead of well. esg they're actually gathering up for a lower play they are rotating back so that's good news that could have been a really awkward way of losing around just being at the wrong bomb site basically and now their positions aren't, aren't as good as they used to be snacks is coming in as close as he gets to the bomb site i think the better it's going to be but if they hold too far back they can just get smoked and flashed out of here delpan looking for an opening and he does miss the shot on snacks and is then probably not going to get a chance to get a second one here i like what new is doing though Neo's position is really nice, like he's circumventing the smoke by just going through it after throwing out nades, so... I don't really see where the opening for ESG is going to come from at this point. It would have been Delpan getting that kill on Snags, but when that failed, then he sort of kept pressing the issue. Things got a little bit tricky. Now they're going to push in. Snags goes down, Taz with a great double return, and then Neo to pick up the bomb as well. It's all on Emilio with 35 seconds left. Does not seem like a winnable round any longer. He is going to take down Neo though, and actually if he can pick up the bomb, he could probably run back to A, but not sure it's going to work out. Not with this much HP, they're down to 19 health. He's kind, he's just caught here. The bomb is out in the open, and Bialy's not going to let this happen. 20 seconds left, he makes the mad dash, and Emilio gets cut down in the open. So. Now we have VP once again at the very brink. They managed to bring it back. ESG, however, they lose the round and they don't get a plant, but they still do have. They could enough. potentially force, but I don't. I think they're going to play it safe and just wait till the next round. Yeah. Yeah, we see a couple of eagles and CZ's picked up. Yeah. But at this rate, Virtus Pro could come back and win this 16-14. ESG oh, are starting to run out of uh, out of ways to really win rounds. It seems like. Snacks waiting right behind the smoke, and they're going to try and push through, but they're weirdly jumping into each other and getting stuck. Snacks taking two quick kills, and there's going to be no bomb on this round unless, well, unless Emilio can somehow go on a crazy hunt with the Deagle. Well, Snacks allows it. Great headshot there from Emilio. He is going to be able to pick up an M4 now, but Pasha will find him from connector. Pasha, we haven't really been seeing too much of him actually. Now that we, uh, now that you think about it. Yeah, yeah like after so. after uh, he picked up the op, it seems like ESG felt it. They felt the disturbance in the force, so they just <laughs> kept away from the alley area for the like, yeah. after that pickup. They were yeah. fine with it, you know. They were just like, yeah, hold hold on to that alley, man. It's all good. I mean, you, Pasha is not exactly the, the type of guy you want to run into in a dark alley at night, right? Exactly. Look at Delpan. He's he wants that up so much. He's gonna just you know neglect buying everything else. One smoke and no body armor at all. 
So, um, you know, that's why I wanted him to keep some of those orbs he's been throwing away, you know, for the rest of the game. But now they actually get a free entrance into the bomb site here. Now they're going to be able to put the bomb down. That Molotov doesn't block it. So they're in a pretty good shape right now. Delpan Smoke can't really see a thing. The bomb goes down and Mike Kilele picks up a kill. And this could be a huge round. Taz pushing through. Delpan taking him down. It's now or never for Virtus Pro, but it doesn't seem to be happening. Pasha and Bialy are left two on four. And that bomb ticking away. They do have the kits, but they need the kills right now. All right, well, here's Pasha, manages to start off strong, gets one, brings it back, but Hoyt then will find his teammate Bayali, and Hoyt then with both in the end, ESG now on match point. This is it, and VP, their money, it's not looking hot. They don't even have enough to buy an AWP. It's going to be pistol armor after all, oh, with a few man. nades. This is it, what a turnaround. ESG now, they just have they just have to lock it down here. The last round, they can do it. I'm shocked. I, I definitely had Virtus Pro as favorites on this map, but you did point out earlier, I think Pasha hasn't been as on fire as we've seen him previously, and that may be a, a big deal here. Obviously, Delpan with the opening shot, Emilio takes down Snags. The heavy hits are here for Virtus Pro on this map so far, and Delpan is going to be going down, but the B bomb site is lost, and I'm not sure I can really believe in this retake. Uh, this is going to be hard. Really hard for VP. I think Bialy has to nail quit them instantly. For them to have a shot at this. Yeah. Let's see the timing here. With that, takes the peaks, finds Viali, gets the kill. And now it is a three on two. Neo still has a gun to work with. But now it's all down to him. 1v3. Bomb ticking. He's running out of time. He doesn't have much of it left here. Neo has to be him. He gets to the site, but it's not for long. Emilio catches wow. him. And that is 16 13. ESG, the Swedes take out VP. That's Titan and VP in their last two matches. Oh, not too shabby. Man. Yeah, Not so shabby at all. You know, SK maybe regretting dropping this team. I hope they do. That's <laughs> so uh, yeah, silly. I hope they do too. Okay, l well, you know, mostly joking, but still, I feel like SK should have some confidence in the in a Counter Strike team and stick with it. Either way, guys, that is going to be a really quick break. Now we don't have a lot of time. It's going to be about five minutes, I think, until the next game is going to be on, and it's ESG versus Reason, which will be probably a really hard fight for Reason, considering how well ESG just played. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.